Oh, oh you're oh making such gosh. a mess. Hey, babe. What? What time is it? Tomato sandwich. Tomato sandwich time. So that's right. It is time for our first tomato sandwich of the season. We've gotten a few nice, beautiful tomatoes. We've gotten, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, about five or six that have been ripe. I know for a fact out in the garden right now, there's more that are ready, but it is time to eat the Mater sandwich. And this is how Jen likes hers the best. A little toasty toast. We gotta get these toasted, but she likes a little garlic salt on hers. And that's the first step. Now the second piece, choosing the tomato. So these two are terracottas. That's a black crown. That looks like a Bonnie's best, a nice plump red one. This is a Korean long, and these are prairie fires. So I don't think we want to go with the prairie fire. I don't want to go with the Korean long, but that one's a little small. I think we're going to have to go for this perfectly red one right here. It just looks like it's ready to be a slicer. The next step, get the sharpest knife you have in your drawer. Last thing you want to do is be squishing all the juice out of this tomato when you're cutting it. Little trick that I've learned to not squish them. If you give a little cut where you want to go, so you can start, cut so nice and easy. And so it's just a little poke, just like that. And there you have it a perfectly cut tomato. The next step what mayo? Our favorite is D Duke's mayo. We're actually out of it for whatever reason on our first tomato sandwich, we're out of it. Weren't prepared, we were not prepared, if you heard it in the background. Um, but of course, you can make your own mayo if you wanted to as well. This morning is a quick trip, so we're just gonna use some craft mayo with olive oil. There's our tomato sandwich. How do you like your tomato sandwiches? How is it, Beth? Does it look good? It looks amazing. <laughs> First one of the year. Yay. Get it. You gotta have that monstrous bite to on the first one. So good. Everything you dreamed it would be? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, breakfast is complete and I am headed up to the garden to see what we have to harvest because we've got some bad storms coming in. And here's something that you need to know, especially for your tomato. If they're starting to turn like this fella right here is and you have a really big rain, that can cause your tomatoes to split. So if you do have a big storm coming through and you've got some almost ripe tomatoes, go ahead and cut them off and let them finish in the windowsill so they don't crack on you. So got quite a few tomatoes. I like it. I love the variety, but look, I actually had one that split because we had a bad rain yesterday. So that's exactly what I'm talking about and what you're trying to avoid. You hear the first sunflower to open. Aren't you pretty? And look at that, our first loofah. That's pretty sweet right there. Big harvest today, finally. So excited. So it's gonna keep going like this every day. Can't wait for that. More squash, we've already got some squash here. The zucchini is actually from my parents' garden because we only planted one plant by accident. So they're giving us some of their zucchini. Um, these cucumbers are from them too because ours weren't ready yet, but now they are. So with that bag and this, I should be able to at least make some refrigerator pickles. And then once they start fully coming in, hopefully tomorrow and on, then we can actually can some pickles. But look at that, so many cucumbers, squash, more squash, zucchini, and then look at these tomatoes. It is finally time and we're gonna get some rain. So I know he went ahead and picked some of them. Oh, yep, yeah, cause that one already split. But I know that's why he picked some that weren't totally ready because we don't want them to split in the rain. Whew, hot. That was itchy. Shoo. I still got to go back and check the green beans and the ground cherries. But y'all, when you're harvesting stuff, like you got to like tackle a few plants at a time because I don't know if you're all skins like Jen and I's, ours, but like we get broke out, like especially with the squash and zucchini plants. Those things get little spikies all over them and they tear you up. But I wanted to do this clip because I want to talk about the Roselle, is it Rosella or Roselle? Roselle. Roselle cherry tomatoes. I know Jen done had one uh, while I was cooling mm -hmm. off, but they are the best cherry tomato we have ever had. And we've grown hundreds of different varieties of cherry tomatoes, but we always come back to this one. It is now the only one we actually grow, isn't it? 
Yeah. Yeah, I think so. We've tried them all, and these are fantastic. So if you've never grown them, grow the Roselles. I almost called you Zen. Wow. So many, everybody calls us Zen and Jack and, or Zen and stuff like that and I almost did it myself. Um, well, she just cut up a bunch of squash and one zucchini um, for the freeze dryer. So we haven't freeze dried squash and zucchini yet, but we've heard people really like it. Yeah, it's supposed to rehydrate and you cook it just like it would be in summertime. It's supposed to be fresh. So we're gonna try it and see how it goes. Yeah, and we're a little rule breaker. We have, we do canned squash. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't do a video because it's just our thing. Anyways, um, it's very, very mushy yeah. when it comes out canned. Um, but however, it's okay for quiches and soups and seasonings. Yes. So what we're hearing though is this rehydrates pretty well and can be used as just kind of how you would use squash and zucchini yeah. for other recipes. So that's really exciting. So we're getting those in the freeze dryer and then what are you doing? I am now making fermented pickles. So somebody sent me two of these crocs. I love them. They've got the weights and it's got a top. Um, and we have about 28 to 29 cucumbers. I'm gonna see how many I can fit in those two crocs, and if they don't all fit, then we'll do some refrigerator bricks. Yeah, so that's really exciting. This is a big thing to do, because the harvests are gonna start getting out of control. Um, and you know, a month from now, check us. You know, we'll probably have a table full. But as it comes in, it's important to just go ahead and harvest it if you can, or uh, preserve it if you can, that way you don't get overwhelmed. So that's what we're doing. Here's the thing about pickles. Everybody wants a crispy pickle, right? When you get done, you don't want to have pull out a pickle and it'd be all nice and mushy. So here is one of the keys that we know. Size matters. Size matters. Size very much matters. The thing I think a lot of us gardeners do is we harvest way too big. Like all of our stuff is way too big. We want the biggest of everything. Well, if you're doing a slicer cucumber, yeah, get you a bigger one. That's perfectly fine. If you're doing pickles, you want them more this size. So you got to think about when you actually eat a pickle out of, you know, a jar that you would buy from a store. They're tiny, right? Tiny little circles. And that helps you keep that thickness. The second piece is how you cut them. You don't want to cut them too thin. You want to have a nice thick layer so it can kind of keep some of that crunch to it. So, you know, ish, and she'll show you here in just a second. But like this one, it's going to be a little bit bigger and that would actually be one of those good like giant size pickles. Yeah, I wasn't going to put that one in here, but it can if you want me to. Alright, let's do the small ones first and we'll go from there. So first you do want to wash them because anything that comes from the garden can have dirt on it or soil or anything. And when you're fermenting, you do not want any of that in there. So wash them real good. Get a little scrubber out if you have to. I only had to scrub one of them and now it's fine. And we're going to start packing them in, see how far we can get, and then we'll go from there. Okay, Zach went out to cut the dill that we're going to need. We're going to go ahead and start. So we've got our cucumbers in. They are packed in tightly, but not too tightly because you don't want to hurt them or bruise them. And there's enough room left for our weights that we're going to put on. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to do four garlic cloves. I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of mustard seeds. We're going to do one teaspoon of peppercorns. Zach got our dill. Mm. Can we shove it in there? Not yet. Not yet. I'll set it back up here. Vinegar. We're going to do a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I'm being very generous because I want them to be really good. Yeah. We're going to do about three good sized bay leaves. And now we've just got a big bunch of dill. Um, it's the flower heads, the stems, the leaves, everything. And we're just going to shove it in there. Chewy, y'all should have just saw our math that we were doing there. We just trying to do a third of a half cup and all kinds of stuff. 
when all in reality you just make the entire mixture in a bowl like Jen said which is a genius idea and pour it in and use what you need because the biggest thing is you want your water and vinegar ratio to be right when fermenting yes and salt too you want yeah. the salt ratio to be right with it as well so she'll go over what we're doing because I still don't know <laughs> all right so we've got three quarts of water in this bowl and now we're going to do a half a cup of vinegar. Make sure it's 5% acidity. Okay. Okay, now we're mixing in a fourth a cup of kosher salt or canning and pickling salt. And now we're just going to mix this all together and make sure that everything gets dissolved and mixed. <laughs> oh, you're oh, making oh such a gosh. mess. I am so happy it's you and not me. <laughs> that didn't go well, but vinegar is a good cleaner, so it's okay. Yeah, honest Just question. Cleaning the counters. If I did that and I looked at you and I said vinegar is a cleaner, yeah. <laughs> how would that have went? <laughs> it's fine. Everything's yeah. fine. So All right. we're almost full. There we go. I'm just going to pour a little bit slower. Yeah, you were going there just all okay. All right, I'm going to start with that because I still have to put the weights in, so I don't want it to... Right, 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 right. Although it already has, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you're familiar with fermenting, you have to put a weight in on top of all the stuff so it keeps everything under the liquid because if it doesn't, that could like pr make it prone to mold, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's what this she is doing now is getting the weights in with her clean fingers. You know, you make sure everything's good and clean so you're not contaminating your liquid. She did it. I did it. You got it in I there. I might pour a little bit more. Okay. All the way to the top of that. Yep. Okay, these guys are done. I just put the weights in, put the top on, and now they're going to sit and ferment for at least 10 days. We'll taste them and see after that. Just kind of look at them, make sure everything is below your liquid all the time you know once or twice a day um and then you'll be good to go they'll be like your grandmother's old-fashioned pickles they're gonna be really good next the rest were a little too big to put in their hole so i actually slice these up and we're gonna try it this way so we're gonna put the same exact ingredients and then we're gonna let those ferment too you're pouring much better this time i am, <laughs> I am. So verdict, it's a lot easier to put those weights in with the cut ones. Yes, <laughs> much easier. Much easier. Okay, so you saw at the beginning all that harvest that we had. It's a lot, much more down now. Um, my so mom's pickles. yeah, they're Bread really and good. butter, and they're so good. She did really great. They have a nice crunch to them. So now um, we'll probably eat this stuff. Yes, I'm gonna make a kind of an old-fashioned squash casserole. It's not really a squash casserole. It's like a squash bake. It's better than casserole. We don't like the casserole. I'm gonna make that with these, and this is gonna become zucchini bread. So we'll get that done, and then wait for tomorrow's harvest. Yeah, and many <laughs> tomato sammies over yes. there. So I know everybody's gonna like, I love y'all in the kitchen. Get back in the kitchen. It's time. It's, it's gonna be happening now. We was just waiting for the harvest to come. The wait is finally over, thankfully. So every day, I assume the harvest will start getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. um, I do still need to go out and check the green beans. So I'm sure that I did this. Um, but hopefully you learned something today. You know, squash and zucchini are one of those things that you start getting overwhelmed with. And us having that freeze dryer option is really gonna be a game changer. It's one of the reasons that we wanted it, to be honest with you. Um, was for this stuff that you get an abundance amount of. Old ferment and pickles over there. It's a classic. It's something that you, if you haven't tried, you definitely need to because it is so, so good. And they're good for you. Yes, very good for you. Anything fermented is. Yep. But y'all, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button for us. We love y'all. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.